Obviously, uh, a lot of people around the world are waking up to the notion that health is wealth and they're, they're spending the time to live healthy, balanced lives. And they're looking for companies like ours that can supply them with healthy nutrition. What is happening on the seller front? Are you, are you finding that you're getting more sellers for the product because a lot of people are displaced from work or at home and they're looking for those kind of opportunities from a career perspective? Yeah, so in addition to our customer demand, we're finding that a number of individuals, you know, they're sitting at home, they're, watch, they're working on their computers, and they're realizing that there may be another way to add an, an additional income stream. Uh, so we are finding that many people are coming into the business with a view to helping develop their own, their own income streams. Yeah. John, it's Brian. Listen, those I talked to today ahead of this interview said that, yeah, you are a health company, but increasingly because of your new computer platforms, you are a data company as well. Without getting, I guess, too into people's personal privacy, how does harvesting all of this data about millions of consumer habits change your business strategy and perhaps its profitability? Yeah, Brian, uh, it's a good point. So, so what we are finding is that across the industry, and especially in our company, there is an acceleration in the push to a new digital state. All of our distributors and our customers, our company, we're really beginning now to leverage technology in what has been a very traditionally, very manual business. We're high touch, high tech. Um, and so we are finding that we're gathering data now. We're understanding customer habits, uh, consumer behaviors, people bought this, who bought that. You know, those kinds of things are now available to us. As we look to the future, a big part of our growth is likely going to come from our digitalization, the, tech, the application of technology across our platforms around the world, 94 different countries. What about the core, multi-level marketing, John? Is that still a controversial term on Wall Street and, and with the regulators, or have you gotten past that? Yeah, no, so we are, you know, our challenges of the past are behind us. Uh, our future is, is so bright, and we're, we're really focused on the business opportunity. There are many people out there who are looking for additional income streams. There are many people out there that are looking to start their own little businesses, and our job is to support them in that. Carl Icahn selling millions of shares, still your largest single shareholder. Does that stock sale by Mr. Icahn, who, by the way, famously, you know, was the subject of a book and an argument on this network about your stock, John, does that stock sale change the pace or direction of your strategy? Oh, not at all. And, and in fact, Carl is, uh, has been in the business now, been in the company eight years. He's been a, a major shareholder. He remains our single largest shareholder today. And he's, he's always expressed his, his uh, support for uh, the, the leadership and the strategy that we have in place. By the way, one of the finest leadership teams this company has ever seen is in place right now. Um, lots of tenure, lots of experience. And uh, Carl, you know, he's, he's a major shareholder and uh, remains so today, even after that sale. Debt finance share buybacks, John, not exactly pro popular right now during the pandemic as a lot of companies deal with falling revenue. Why are you going that route? Yeah, we're, we're a business that generates a lot of cash, um, and we have a strategy for how we deploy that cash in the most effective way for our company. Um, it's generated by our business, not from any other source. And um, we do what we think is right for the company on any given day, right for the shareholders on any given day. Our decisions are, are, are based in our strategy. You know, John, your company, especially the way that you're structured with your people and your sales folks and direct marketing, are sort of uniquely qualified to address the reopen because your business is truly people to people. When you look at your crystal balls, I'm sure you've got scientists and medical experts and who knows what else on your board or at least consulting you. What are you hearing around parts of the country about a kind of a, a return to, I hate to use the term normal, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So we have the we have the advantage of, of having watched uh, the the pandemic as it evolved in China. We're in China and a number of other countries around the world, as you know, and so we've we've gotten to see kind of what works and what doesn't in many different settings. And so as it relates to the U.S., I think very clearly there's the the impact of the disease and the pandemic itself on people's behaviors, on consumption, 
And then, of course, there's the impact of, the imp of, of what's happening in the economy on people's decision making as well. It's complicated. It, it, it's moving state to state and city to city. Uh, but we're in every community. Our distributors live on the corner, live down the street from almost every single consumer, uh, every single one of our customers. So we're really involved at the, at the street level on what's going on. Um, it's, it's pleasing to see that people are responding. You know, technology has been a great help. Um, uh, the, the, the plain old phone is important as well. People calling each other, talking to each other, um, helping each other through this. By the way, uh, my heart goes out to every single person that has been impacted by this, by this pandemic. It's, it's, there, there are many that have lost loved ones. There are many that are, have lost their jobs and are struggling today. But I'm also confident that we're going to get through this.